All right, so we were talking about typesetting in Illustrator and some of its advantages, especially that you can take the type tool that allows you to edit things and you can do uh, multiple things with it. For instance, you can do what's called a type on path tool. So if you wanted your type to not be on a, a straight horizontal, you could draw, let's say, an arced path, and then you use the type on path tool, and you can arc your letters on that path, and you can still edit them and change their size. I'm just using my initials there. And then if you create outlines by first selecting it and then right clicking, then you turn them into vectors which allows you to do everything you would do to any kind of vector image with anchors. And you can modify. All right, so what do you do when you're done with it that's different than out of vector.com? Because we created outlines, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these other aspects. Because we created outlines, all of these are individual vector paths. And so when we save them, we're going to save them as an EPS file or as an SVG. Let's see what the difference is, right? So I'm going to call this, so Plague Illustrator Test as an SVG. And then we have a different format that I usually use, which is an EPS, which is another portable vector format that Illustrator allows us to save. And that's usually what I'll, what I'll give to vendors. So if I save a vector logo or a logo type and then give it to a vendor to print or to a client, it's always an EPS file. So now if I quit Illustrator, I'm in Photo P here, but it could be the same as Photoshop. And then I want to find that SVG and that EPS that I just saved. So there's the EPS. And there's the SVG. So let's see how they work differently. If I drag and drop the SVG in, it's not missing any information. It's all there. It comes in as a smart object. It's perfectly clean. I'll just place it there for now. And then to color it, I would use layer styles the same way. As we've learned in the past. Just picking some settings that are visible, right? And we'll be playing with, with coloring our vector type next class. But that all comes in cleanly, as opposed to when I tried to bring in the SVG from vector.com, because I wasn't able to trace it as outlines, it's not able to read it. The only things it was able to read were the, the individual vector shapes I made on top of it. Now, what about the EPS? The EPS basically is an SVG file without the artboard around it. So the, the EPS, it just locks right to what the cutout is. So it's just a really efficient portable vector file. And that's why I usually use it to send to clients, but it operates the exact same way. So EPS and SVG are vector file formats that can work between programs. All right. Now, let me show you the most helpful thing about Illustrator. So remember my sketch 
and I composited the first and the second, right? So let's look at that second there. In Illustrator, I can open up just a raster file. So this PNG from online. And this is something that vector.com can't do. So I can open up the PNG and I can actually have Illustrator uh, trace it, what's called live tracing. And sometimes I'll call it vectorizing. So if I open this, this raster PNG low resolution file with Illustrator, which is downloaded on my computer, when I click on it, it will give me options at the top that say image trace. And then I have different options. I'm going to choose black and white logo. Then I'm going to go to advanced options, which is here. Click on advanced and say ignore the white. And when I zoom in, you're going to see that it's trying to trace it into a clean vector. And I have these controls to kind of adjust how clean it is, how curvy it is, how contained it is, right? And it's not perfect, but then when I hit expand, it traces it into a vector. And I ignored the white, so I don't have white shapes. I just have black shapes. Which then, just like outlining type, allows me to clean it up individually. So the two looks great. The end does not look so great, so I have to augment that. I'm going to do it kind of quickly here. And unlike in um, vector.com, I really like the pencil tool in Illustrator. It's kind of like magic scissors that just let you redraw the edges as long as you start and stop on the same path. That'll work. And then you also have kind of some smooth functions, which are nice under the pencil tool. So it just will even out curves and try to reduce the number of anchors that are used. So when you have a lot of anchors, it's a pretty helpful tool at cleaning it up. Works especially well on type. And this is not a typography class, not a type design class, it's just one exercise we have that uses it. But it's definitely something that's needed in our in our world. And I wanted to to show you some of the tools that are most helpful. And even if you work as a, as a digital artist, and there's always a graphic designer that's working with you, that does all of this for you, it's good for you to understand what goes into it so that you can make better artwork, more versatile artwork to go with such things. And I had to deal with that all the time working for newspapers and doing kind of covers. You wanna make sure there's room for the typesetting Sometimes they know what the type will be already, and then you can make artwork that goes with it. That's often the case with weeklies or magazines that have title flags they always use, like Time Magazine. You're always designing around that iconic title flag. And other times you get to design the type. Things like album covers. So for that, now I can just save it as an SVG or an EPS.
and then bring it in. I can also alter it just as a vector without having to trace everything individually. All right. So there's that EPS, then I can just drag and drop that in. Comes in as a smart object. It has all that extra space around it just because of the, the artboard that it was on. Oops but then I can rotate it. And put it, put it in its place in the design as a clean vector. So sometimes paying for the programs just saves you time. But any way you go, we just want black vector type to be used. All right. So that will do it until next time. And next time we are going to add color to our type. And we are going to add a background and we're going to add a border and turn these into posters. And if we look at our course outline, these aren't due until a week from now, assignment eight. So we're going to look a lot at kind of finishing processes and printing processes and something called color separation for printing to get to our, our finished example. And then also next class, I will show you how we can just make custom type. So I'll take my sketches in into vector.com and then just trace these with the pen tool instead of live tracing them with Illustrator, right? And we'll compare those results. Ultimately, the more you can control it, the better, because I have to like do these little teardrops as well. It just, sometimes a program like Illustrator can save you a lot of time. All right, that, that will do it.